technically what we tried to design is the first flying car in history. And I know people claim the first flying car. Media started calling EVITOLS electric helicopters flying cars several years ago, but we always had an idea that it had to be a car. A physical car, a regular car, as you can see, it's an EV, it's an electric vehicle. A regular car, drive, park, look, everything as a car, and a vertical takeoff. Surprisingly enough, that never happened in history. Never in history the car was able to do the vertical takeoff. So this is obviously the half size. Um, we have the real one, the full size, uh, several of them in Silicon Valley, San Mateo, and Santa Clara, two offices. And they've been flying for about two and a half years. The real one, right? Um, how does it work is, let's say you take the real car, right? It looks like a car and everything. Take out the engine from front, everything in front of the cabin. Take out the trunk also because you need empty space inside. In the empty space, put what is called DEP, distributed electric propulsion. Four propellers in the front, four propellers in the back. Uh, it's not propellers, it's propellers, speed controllers, motors, right? So you kind of have like four engines with four propellers here and four propellers in the back. That And also they have a differential thrust, which means some can spin faster, some can spin slower. So you have the car, you have empty front, empty back, and then you put propellers inside. But the air needs to come through. Good thing you guys not a radio, because now you can see how it, it's very hard to describe. It's a mesh, which on one hand gives you a structure, on the hand it allows the air to come through for propellers to have enough lift. Mm -hmm. But you need to drive, you don't have engine anymore. What do you do? Inside each of the wheel, inside four wheels, there is a motor, a smaller motor, which makes it able to drive. This is kind of like a very, very basic how you take the car and how you turn the regular car into the flying car. That's not the end of the story though. Um, something I will talk about tomorrow in my keynote, but very briefly describing. Everything I just described to you would work for about flight of five minutes. The problem is the modern technology you take the best battery in the world and it's electric uh, propulsion. It can handle about five minutes of this, maybe 10 minutes. There is no battery in the world. There is no energy in the world which exists which can make it fly. Mm. That's one of the reasons we did not have flying car for 100 years. Interesting. So what do you do? You need wings, big wings. How the, car, how the airplane stays up, right? You have the uh, wing is shaped a certain way. Mm -hmm. So the air under the wing travels faster than over the wing, creates a pressure and pushes it up. This is why you don't fall, right? Yeah. There's no wings here. Right. Moreover, right. Yeah. if you put expandable wings, as people try to, that's not gonna work because you're gonna have more weight. Now you cannot, you don't have enough power to take off vertically. Moreover, the car is shaped to actually push you down. This is how the cars are, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't lift from the asphalt. Mm -hmm. So from the laws of physics, that would make it impossible. Now, Constantine, which is standing somewhere right there, came up with a very interesting thing. Something so simple, people for 100 years could not get it. The answer was so simple. If you take the car, if you take like the car, right? It goes up and you see some of this. You're going to see some of this on a, on a video there. Where the wings are going to come from, which weighs zero pounds. And where is this? So the car turns like this. When the car turns like this, it flies forward towards you. You have two wings. It's a biplane, big bottom wing, big top wing. Moreover, the air comes through here because it's open, right? It's not solid. It yeah. is open, right? And yeah. you have propellers inside. So it flies like this. It's a very good and stable design, like a biplane, right? If you look carefully at the side, and if you look at it from the type, it's actually shaped as a wing. It was so simple, people didn't get it. When we fly without this, it consumes about <laughs> seven to 10 times more energy than this. Wow. If we fly yeah, like this, even like this, mm. we are way more efficient than Tesla or any EV. In fact, you're looking at the greenest motor vehicle in history. Well, it's bold trains and obviously the technology to, to, to match and we'll, we'll see when, when things actually do eventually take off, of course. Um, to match those claims though, Jim, I mean, this is a big endeavor. 
you have to produce these things and you've got a concept here but you're also trying to get these off the ground in in the states when do you actually forecast getting these these models into production and what's the legwork you've got to do to make that happen on the manufacturing side that's a good question so as of today we have a little bit more than 2850 pre-orders with deposits down which makes it the best-selling aircraft in history more than boeing airbus Joby Archer and most of the EVTOLs combined. Producing that, we've, it's crazy how to produce 2,850 of those. Now, we're going to start slow. And when people think that a million of those are going to fly above San Francisco, above Barcelona, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very slow. One, then more, and then more, right? So the sentence usually goes like this, and usually people hear just the last word in the sentence. Every word in the sentence matter, including the last one, not only the last one. If everything goes right, we plan to. And if we have enough funding, if the laws at least not going to be worse, at least going to be existing as at least regulations, we plan to start production of the first one by the end of 2025. Okay. I want to make sure people don't hear 2025, <laughs> but they have all the sentences. So the end of 2025, that, that's the goal. You've got Not even production. end, everything before that. All the yeah. if statements before that also matter. Yes, yes. Obviously a lot to, to happen before you get to that, that particular milestone. It's actually pretty realistic. It's yeah. pretty realistic. Um, we know where we are. We're doing the flight testing. It's pretty good right now. Um, it's realistic, but those things need to happen. Definitely. Okay. And so in terms of the, the stages that you have to go through, it's obviously a big monetary endeavor as well. You need a lot of money to make this happen. And you, you've got investors like Tim Draper, for instance, an early Tesla investor behind the company. You've raised a lot of money already, but it seems like for something like this, you might need some more VC cash. Is that something that you're, you're interested in, in, in raising in, in the next year or so? Right, so first of all, we're lucky to have existing investors. We have 18 investors right now. Um, obviously, Draper Associates is the biggest one. Here's interesting, our second biggest investor is actually from Spain. Draper B1, which is semi-accidentally have the same name as Draper there. We have other pretty cool investors like Impact VC, like Strong VC, and many, many other interesting investors. We are welcoming new good investors, right? We're mm -hmm. not looking for any investors, we need the right investor, right? The person who aligns with values, with what we do, like very good alignment in that. But yes, uh, on the other hand, we are so much more efficient than aviation if it all in some companies. So we're not looking at hundreds of mil hundreds and millions of dollars. We're looking at a much, much smaller investment because this is lighter, this is simpler, hmm. this is easier to go to market. We already have pre-orders, which means it's a much simpler, it requires less resources. Moreover, because it's so light, it classified as ultralight in some jurisdictions like uh, Canada, actually European Union, UK and some others, which means in some jurisdictions it does not need certification at all to start flying. There's a lot of restrictions. It's a first step. After that, you need the full certification and the full thing. But to get it into the hands of people and make sure people can start using it today, we can actually do it. There is actually jurisdictions which allow us to get it into people today. So what are those jurisdictions? Where, where are you targeting in terms of live countries that you see going in the next couple of years? And, and, and when is a big question as well. When do we start seeing test flights and then actual proper flights with people inside inside these vehicles? So test flights you can already see in Silicon Valley. We're already test flying this. Um, now, I like Canada because in Canada, like I said, we can actually legally classifying it as an ultralight, get it into people today and yep. make sure they fly with restrictions obviously. A lot of restrictions and make sure this is safe, like completely separate conversation. This is safer than uh, almost every aircraft which is flying today and safer than a car. Even safer than a car. But uh, Canada is one thing. In Europe, ultralight doesn't mean the same thing as in Canada. But mm. it's a simple, simpler certification. You don't have to certify it same as a Boeing or anything like that. Right. It's a much simpler certification in Europe. US is probably the most strict, but we're trying to get it even lighter than that to fit even US regulations. Again, this is just the first step. Mm. Later, we want to classify it as the whole thing, and you should be able, whatever you feel, actually here. 
right? Yes. Above the city, the whole thing and so on. That will take some time. It's not going to be tomorrow, it's not going to be this year, it's not going to be next year. So, still, still more time to come before we, we properly see it coming. But there's some regions where you see a bit more positive momentum coming than others. Now, on the regulation, I mean, what, what do you have to overcome in terms of the regulation? Because there's obviously big safety concerns to getting something like this in the air, where you're going to be navigating other air traffic. There's obviously other vehicles in, in the skies, and I'm thinking even, you know, aircraft and helicopters, you know, like how, how do you man manage to sort of actually make sure there's no safety issues from right, that Right, so there is a short term and a long term, and safety is not exactly synonymous with the regulations, unfortunately, in our field. I can talk separately about safety, which is not required from us, but which we do because safety is our go-to market. Mm. This thing would not work without being so, it's a new thing. When people were driving horses and they then went into the cars, the first thing was safety. When people driving cars and that car flies, it's not regulation, it's a human who needs to be mm. so feel safe to get there. Now let's go back to regulations for a second. In regulations, let's put it this way. Don't help me, just don't get me in trouble. If existing regulation stays, we're good. Because in the short term, not in the long term, but in the short term, we fit into existing regulations. We do everything which exists mm. today. Consider us a small airplane, consider us a helicopter, consider us something small. When we turn into the car, consider us Tesla. Right? Right. Uh, fit into existing regulations. That will not work if there's going to be millions of those. Yeah. But uh, FAA and NASA actually really doing a good job because they're preparing for scale highway in the sky exists. Mm -hmm. So they're actually doing a very good job. I'm surpri surprised, maybe like a bad word, but uh, I'm really happy with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I was, again, surprised that they're moving faster than I thought and faster than we thought, right? They're actually doing a good job. They're making sure they're preparing. So if this is going to scale, they're going to take care of things. It's not going to be anything bad. FAA, as far as I know, has the best right now, best regulation, best safety record in history. So they know what they're doing.